Hi, I'm Joelle from SALT Software. In this short video, we'll be going through the Analyze menu in SALT 20. When you first open the software, you're presented with this dialog box, and we're going to work with the sample that is in the software already. So I'm going to go ahead and click Open, and then under Samples, Lesson Samples, and we're going to work with Jeremy. This is a conversational play-based sample from Jeremy, who's five years, five months old. A couple of things to point out before we go into the Analyze menu is the Analysis Set, the Word Base, and then the Transcript Cut. So you can select the Analysis Set here by this button, and this is which utterances are going to be included in your analysis. So you're taking your whole language sample and narrow narrowing the sample down according to these um, parameters. So by default, we will only use complete and intelligible verbal utterances. There's also some utterances that are excluded by default, such as abandoned or interrupted utterances, any utterance that has unintelligible speech, and a nonverbal utterance. There's more options to choose from here, as you can see, if you're interested in that. You can also exclude utterances if they are um, coded. So perhaps you've come up with a coding scheme and you want um, certain utterances to be excluded. You can use that. Or conversely, you can um, include utterances if you've coded utterances um, for something specific. So for now, we will go ahead and take that default. The next is the word base. So this is which words will be included in the sample. By default, parenthetical remarks, those are those remarks that aren't contributing to the sample. Maybe a speaker might say, oh, I forgot the name, or what's that called again? So it's not contributing to the content of the language sample. Those can be marked um, through parentheticals, and those can be excluded. And again, you have that same option to exclude words with a word code, or you can include words if they are coded. And the third button up here is the transcript cut. So there's a lot of flexibility as far as what part of your transcript you want to use. The default is to start at the beginning, as you can see, and end at the end of the transcript. However, you can work from utterance number, you can work from a timing line or a code um, for the start and ending point. Or if you just are interested in the first 100 utterances, you can um, select that and put in your criteria there as far as the content. So that's just um, a good thing to keep in mind as you are um, making your analysis. We'll go ahead and cancel. Okay, so now that we've gone over that, let's go ahead and open up the Analyze menu. In SALT 20, you'll find that the Analyze menu looks a little bit different than it has in previous versions. So what we've done with this version is organized the Analyze menu um, and also the database menu, but the Analyze menu by language domain. So the first section is the overview. Those are those broad reports. And then we have some information on utterances. And then by language domain, syntax, morphology, semantics, discourse, verbal facility, errors, and codes. And each one of these sections has a summary as well. So that can be kind of a nice way to um, kind of target what you're looking at. So hopefully this will make it easier for clinicians to run reports based on their area of interest of what they want to find out about the language sample. So we can go ahead and just open a few of these reports to give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, we have our standard measures report, and again, because this is with the Analyze menu, this is just raw data, the stats for these measures. So we have transcript length information, speech intelligibility, syntax morphology, including MLU and words and morphemes, percent utterances with verbs, and mean verbs per utterance, and then semantics, which is our vocabulary, um, total words, different words, and then we have our moving average number of total words and number of different words, and our moving average type token ratio. If you have collected a conversational sample, the discourse measures will be included here. So that is measures such as uh, mean turn length in words and utterances, responsiveness to questions, intonation prompts, overlapping speech, and interrupted 
speech or utterances that are interrupted. Verbal facility is your rate, so words per minute, pauses, and also those maze words, those revisions, repetitions, false starts, those are included there as a percentage, and the percent abandoned utterances. And errors are also included in this report, percent utterances with errors, and then number of omissions and error codes. Also in the Analyze menu, we have our performance report. And what this is, is it's going to generate a, basically a start to your diagnostic report. It's a narrative that can be copied and pasted into some other format. So we need to fill in how we want to identify the speaker. It will take the name that's filled in in the header by default, and then you can select the gender um, that is also taken from the um, header line in your transcript. So we're going to go with Jeremy, and he's a male, and we'll hit OK there. And then as you can see, um, here is our report kind of written out for you. So this gives you, um, it goes through the elicitation task, the transcription length, intelligibility, all of those kind of measures that were on the standard measures report plus any additional reports that were needed to pull information um, to make a more comprehensive um, diagnostic report. So you can see um, kind of how this looks. And again, you can go ahead and um, save this either as a PDF, an RTF if you want to paste it into Word uh, or a text format. So it can be really um, convenient just to use this for your diagnostic report writing. Okay, let's go into um, the summary of utterance types. So this gives you a lot of information about just basically the types of utterances that were in the sample. So statements, exclamations, questions, abandoned utterances, um, if, if there were intonation prompts used by the clinician. So that can be kind of um, interesting to look at too. Sometimes this is easy an easy way to see was it kind of a balanced conversational sample. Um, it looks like the child had 44 statements and the examiner had 40. So that's a pretty good kind of back and forth ratio. But if that ratio is really off, you might think, oh, was this, you know, not, um, is there too much examiner talking going on in this? So this can be kind of just a quick look and see um, just the different utterance types. Let's go into the syntax and morphology summary. And this is data on MLU and words and morphemes. Brown stage is listed if you're interested in, in brown stage development. Um, and then the expected age range. And then percent utterances with verbs and mean verb per utterance. And then as far as um, bound morphemes, these are the bound morphemes that are listed. And then if they occurred in the analysis set that we set forth, or in the um, total number of utterances. And this data is listed again for child and examiner. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up the semantics summary. And again, we have child and examiner, and this is information on the vocabulary. So number of total words, number of different words, and then our type token ratio. So that can be handy. Discourse summary. Okay, so here's the discourse summary. Um, again, if you've taken a conversational sample or if you are interested in learning more about a speaker's pragmatic discourse skills, this can be really a lot of good information and you can even use this to kind of set goals with baseline data. Um, so this is the mean turn length and then responsiveness. So are they responding to questions? Are they responsive to intonation prompts if you're using those? Um, request for clarification, yes, no responses, etc. And then there's also um, a little bit on imitations and spontaneous utterances. And then down at the bottom we have other measures, percent utterances with overlapping speech, percent interrupted the other speaker, so if they are interrupting the examiner, and percent words mentioned first. And again, there's uh, many sub reports under each section, but we're just kind of going over the um, broad ones. Verbal facility, um, that's that rate and pause and then the maze information. So we're looking at speaking rate. Are they pausing a lot? The number of pauses and the total pause time. So lots of good information on that. Um, you might be interested in looking at this 
if you are concerned about word retrieval or utterance formulation. A lot of times when kids um, struggle with that, this data will be impacted. Um, the maze summary breaks down all of the types of mazes. So are they doing revisions where they're changing what they're saying? Are they repeating what they're saying? Um, or is it a filled pause like um, er? So it just breaks down those um, types of maze behaviors into more specifics. And also abandoned utterances. If they just can't complete the thought or the utterance, um, that is listed there as well. Okay, and then under the errors, I'm going to go into the omission and error codes. And I'm going to go first speaker here. And then I always like to do the total utterances because I don't really care um, about the analysis set at this point because I want to see all of their errors and omissions. So I select that and then we'll hit OK. And then what this is, is a report of their errors. So it looks like um, Jeremy omitted the word not one time and then word level, he had a pronoun error. Um, he said your, and he should have said yours. And then his word level errors, it looks like he used the word uh instead of an three times, but you can code those for any, um, any word level error. And then the utterance level error codes are if there's three or more errors in the sentence. So it looks like his first one, he had a maze and they said, you have for breakfast fried eggs. So there's kind of a syntax um, error there going on. And this can be a nice way to see are there any patterns going on in their errors? And that, again, might be a target for therapy. And then what we can do is go down to um, the code summary. So this is going to be all codes. So again, in Jeremy's sample, we just had error level codes. But if you had done a unique coding scheme, um, you would get the data for all codes here in this report. Okay, and hopefully that gives you a good sense of how to walk through the Analyze menu using SALT20. Thanks for watching.